tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. I'm sitting with my best friend, Tony. What's up, buddy? What's going on, homie? I'm excited about uh, this month. Um, we've had lots and lots of conversations about inner health. And, you know, once again, um, we're, we're, we're promoting this as Hairstylist Inner Health Month. Um, again, we just, we, I like inner health because it sounds more proactive to me. Absolutely. And, and what's cool is that everybody we've had on this month uh, is sharing something personal, but also sharing uh how they uh focus on inner health yeah yeah exactly and you know if if this month is dedicated to if you're ready to like you know uh explore your own mental health then you know we're trying we're hopeful that you'll get you'll gain a little bit of a something out of uh out of you know the inner health part of it again meaning like how can i proactively be involved in my in my own mental health journey yeah and and you know anytime anybody can uh grab a nugget or two out of these conversations it's well worth the conversations and i know that every week that we have it i'm grabbing something from them to to strengthen my inner health yeah yeah for sure you know something to think about some kind of tool to use and i think that that's it right this is the the the, the intention of this month is to be the month of tools right like so it's like mental health tools or inner health tools so you know i think that uh we we've done pretty good up to this point but today so it's impossible for us as an industry to talk about mental health it's impossible for us as an industry to talk about inner health and not talk about our guest Elizabeth Fay, who's coming on the podcast today. Um, she's had a profound effect, not just on you and I, but the industry as a whole. Um, she was kind enough, or her t- her and her team were kind enough to invite us to a two. Um, oh my God, I'm brain farting. Come on, hair love Next name. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> dude, you, you killed me. Um, so, hair love retreat. Ah, man. Man. So we've been we've been we've been uh, fortunate enough to attend two hair love retreats. And listen, um, I, maybe this is part of like maybe this is subconscious um, kind of uh, uh, whatever about it. But uh, you know, there's a lot of inner health that goes on there. There's a lot of conversation about mental health and inner health. But again, it's about like how can we be? How can we be better? And by we, I mean the people that sit in your shoes. You know, from from the the breath work that we did that was so incredibly profound. Um, that we got to do in Texas. Um, and I, it, it's to do breath work like that is you leave, you, you leave a different person. It's funny because everybody, I mean, first I'll speak for you and I, mm-hmm. when we leave uh, hair love, I mean, we, we we're blown away and not just by the experience, but by also by all the things that we, like you said, with the breath work that we're able to accomplish within ourselves people that we've talked to have been there experiences the same thing. And they also continue on with that journey, Mm. you know? And so they have lifted this industry in a way that uh, I I haven't seen. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's like the waves of Elizabeth Fay, right? It's like, it's like these waves that continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger and impact more and more people. And, you know, it's funny. I, I, when you speak of waves, she is the rock that was dropped in the middle of the mm. pond and you see the rippling effect going out and that's her reach. That's her touch. Those rippling waves all the way to the edge. And that's, that's how I feel about Elizabeth. When, when I think about all the things that she's doing for the industry, a hundred percent. And even like personally, I mean, there's so many friendships that we, that we gained at hair love retreat. Um, you know, people that we still contact are in contact with all the time, you know, it's just, it, it's really cool. Um, it's really cool to kind of watch that effect. And, and again, how, it, how it's affected us personally. I mean, how many, how many of our friends or how many people that 
to, to put it in real, like how many people that that showed up at hair at, at Presley Poe and friends last year were people that we met through through Elizabeth or through hair love, you know, and 100%. and then, you know, and, and even not just our events, but we've got to work with people in their God, this is so cool. We got to work with people in their events as well. You know, just it's just it's just really cool. The, the Again, the ripple effect and, and, and you know, we're, we're, I'm going to I'm going to label Elizabeth as the rock. But but to use you, I mean, like it's a rock in a different way. It's not a rock of foundation but it's a rock of like uh, of waves of growth so let's bring on miss waves of growth herself miss elizabeth Fay. elizabeth man welcome welcome back to your day off i'm over here crying can you guys like introduce me like when i feel bad about myself and <laughs> just call you up like oh my that was beautiful and that's thank the you. impact that you're having on people so thank you yeah wow thank you for saying that I think this is the first time that we've ever opened up with tears. Like we've usually got <laughs> the tears in the pocket, but literally open up with tears. Oh, it but just... Elizabeth, it's true, man. You know, it's like, and and I know that sometimes when you're in it, you don't quite see the impact. But I can tell you that that you know, being not completely on the outside, but but being a little bit on the outside and just knowing the people that we've met and that you've introduced us to and who we've seen in the industry and who are now, frankly, our friends, you know, we see that the impact that they're making on the industry, like, I don't, again, maybe on the inside, it's really hard to kind of see that, but, but, but the impact that you're making is, is, is profound, profound. I mean, you, you are now the hairstylist that changes the world. You are now the hairstylist that reached so many. Well, well, good morning. <laughs> oh, I love what I do. I love what I do. Well, we love what you do too. Hmm. It's a cool so, industry. The, the, the best. It's the best. It really is. Hey, so um, I, I kind of, I'm, I'm going to bring the tears away a little bit and, and, and let you gloat a little bit. So, um, <laughs> So this year, uh, uh, Tony and I, we weren't able to make Hair Love Retreat, but it just ended. So like, and this one's a little small. Tell us a little bit about what you, what you what happened this year. Yeah. So I've had them all sizes. Um, and I mean, since we launched in 2017. So, you know, since our first one, we, they've been different sizes. And I really like, I just like since 2020, I've been really intentional about everything I do, you know, and I, 2020 was like an opportunity to be like, why do I do what I do? Do I want to do what I do? Do I want to quit everything? Do I want to not like, and so now I, I allow myself to ask the questions actually, like, I'm like, is this in alignment? Do I want to still do this? Whatever that is. And I did feel like there was a tweak I wanted to make. And for me, I was craving depth, not width. And that just was like, so like potent for me. I was like, it's about depth, not width. And I'm a pretty deep bitch. Like I go deep no matter what I do, even when there's width, but I just craved like, I was like, I want my, we all know marketing is our messaging that speaks to right who you want in your chair, who you want in your business. And so I was like, I really want the marketing to be very clear that this is for people who are serious about their career their higher level in their career like that's you know we we always have a mix of lots of incredible humans at hair love but all heart centered all people who really care about the craft um but I wanted um, to to call in people who were in higher positions in the industry and serious about their craft. And I wanted a smaller crew. And so I wanted to have, you know, about no more than 50 people. And so it was a smaller one. And I literally told my team, I was like, this year, it's no ridiculous lighting. I mean, we had cool lighting, but like not over the top. There's no big stage. Like it's literally going to be like retreat vibes like hardcore retreat vibes and I was like I want to take my favorite pieces of all the different things we've done at hair love and like almost like you know like a my favorite things party or like a my favorite things dinner where you like pick all the signature hair love things so we did the signature hair love hike we did the signature we have like a whole thing we do with my dad with the star wall and we build things together and we did a signature, like all of our business classes were mastermind style. All of our hair classes were even like mastermind style, which I don't know anyone in the industry who mixes like facilitation methods like we do with the way we do things. Everything was just like, I picked all our favorite community activities. Like I literally picked like the best of hair love and was like, we're going to do all our signature things in one year. 
And I'll tell you, I was doing something secretly without telling people, you know, I really like when you look at someone like, like a Tony Robbins, he has these signature events that, you know, right. You go to this event, you unleash your power, you walk on coal. Like there's certain things. And we've done that kind of on accident where we have these signature hair love things because they cause transformation and they're pieced in the event in certain ways to help you create a journey of evolution within yourself. And so I was like, I really want to start crafting like this is the hair love signature experience every time. And we're just going to switch out maybe a keynote speaker, a business topic or a hair topic, but it's going to stay a signature experience. So for me, I, you know, I was testing out picking my favorite parts, crafting it. And every year we do a well-being day, a business day, a craft day. So we followed that same concept we've done every year. Um, and it was amazing. It was so amazing. There was no big stage. I am every year is amazing, but like there people just showed up even more authentically, if that's possible, even more open-hearted. Um, you know, I've been learning a lot about leading a community over the last decade of my life, but really hardcore over the last five years, I feel like I've been in a pressure cooker of like learning how to be a leader um, through good things and hard things, right? Like running a business isn't always perfect. Like I run a huge community. Like I learn things all the time and in a human centric business. And so I really took like, what was the best of leadership? How do I really want people to be? And I did something more than I've ever done before. And I did it really um, potently at last, the hair love you were at last year. I really set the rules of the the energetics of the container. I wouldn't even say rules. Like this is how we play energetically. You know, we're self-led. We take radical responsibility, all these things that really shifted the, the dynamic. And this year I said, what was great about that and what could be better? And I shifted that even more. And I was actually inspired by Burning Man and my dad, when he hikes certain places, you like leave no trace. Right. And I was like, how can we, not come in the energy of like, what can I get out of this event? Because it's so easy to be like, well, what's here for me? I was like, what can you bring to this event? And my dad said, this is an energetic potluck. What you put here, we're all going to like partake in. And I really, this year was like, everyone, like, and I did this last year, but I did it even more this year. Like everyone is co-creating this experience. This is a co-creation this is not like a guru student situation. This is a co-creation. Yes, there are educators. Yes, of course. But like your energy and the way you be. And it was basically like, you know, when we complain, when we this, when we that, like it fucks the vibe, guys. Like, like that's not how we're going to be. Like we take radical responsibility. It was the first year in my career, this whole year, all three events I've ran, I have had no complaints. Everyone has stepped up to help. Like they're part of a family, like Burning Man. Everyone cooks together. Everyone cleans up together. People were helping with everything. And the relationships made were on another fucking level. And that says a lot because hair love, this just happens. And I literally was like, oh, that's how I lead these events. Like, it's just, I'm learning to refine the way I lead my own community. And it was like our most simple, but our most profound year I've ever had. And I learned a lot because it rained halfway through. We had to take all the fluffy sets down. And for years, I was like, this is what matters. It has to be all these things. And we even, and like, it didn't fucking matter. Like it's the way you show up. It's how you show up. It's how you facilitate the way you be with people, the way we interact, the way we facilitate, like the, the place you're in, like all of it. And it just, for me, it was a lesson of like, like I had one of my students literally be like, you're the portal. And that was such a beautiful lesson for me. And I think for all business owners is like, you're the portal, you're the magic in your business. Everything else supports that. And it's so easy to be like, well, people come because of the tea and the fancy salon and the this and the that. That's all beautiful and it can support an experience, but you are the experience, your energetics, which is why your well being matters. Like, if you can't show up well, like the portal's a little fucked, you know? And so for me, this year was like, it was like a gift from the universe, like to be like, just show me where I'm at in my life. And it was beautiful. I, I needed this year. It was like, it was soft. It was perfect. It was profound. Um, yeah. And I kept it small next year. Like I just, and it doesn't mean I won't go big again, but like, that's where I'm at tomorrow, you know, like right now.
I, I love that you're giving the grace and the permission to be like, it is what it is, you know, like, like next year it was going to be this and maybe it is bigger. Maybe, maybe you need to reach more people or something, but, but I love that you're giving yourself permission to, to live in that grace a little bit. I'll tell you what, I miss, uh, Papa Jeff. <laughs> I know. Oh, it's Papa Jeff. He's so good. If you guys could come next year, we'll make it happen. Um, homie right there. He's so good. And we, him and I facilitated even more this year together. So it was really beautiful. Like we did some workshops together and, um, you know, we just really leaned into like, what's the most potent education, even if it's not a famous influencer teaching it. And some of it was my dad teaching and it was fucking great. You know, like it's, it's about the outcome and the transformation and Sometimes it doesn't need to be someone with a half a million followers, you know, doing it. And sometimes it does. Like, that's fine, too. But I'm just saying, right. like, this year was like d- my dad taught for a lot of it. And it was phenomenal. You know, well, I'll tell you, talk about your dad as an educator. Tony and I, we were just in Moab and we kind of like we, we took like a road trip, like through the through the national parks there. And, and we said the one thing that was missing that we wish we could have like uh, put Papa Jeff in the truck with us. And that totally he, like edgy. And, and I'm going to tell you this, Elizabeth, like. We might be stealing your dad at some point because we um <laughs> we, we definitely talked about like if we ever go back to Moab, we're definitely flying your dad up or or I don't know, Ubering him up. I don't know how you get to Moab from 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 Vegas. But but you know, we were gonna bring him up just just to have his knowledge because he's such a knowledgeable guy about the terrain and about what all you do. Yeah, bring your wife's design and he'll be here and we'll just all do it together. You don't have to fly him anywhere. <laughs> there you go. Well, then we might kidnap him and take him to Moab with us. We <laughs> there you go. Him all the way back to Maryland. <laughs> yeah, for real. Oh, he's such a treat. He's such. He really. He really is. Um. Hey, real quick. I want. I kind of want to get into like the the, the program that we're uh, we're talking Let's about do it. about like nervous system regulation. But I, I have a couple questions about uh, not just about hair love, but but about your own journey. Like you kept talking about. Does this align with me? Does this not align with me? Like, how did you? discover, find what work and not for you necessarily, but, but for what work can one do to figure out or the questions to ask what their own alignment is? So as they're, as they're now, and maybe it's more than a question, maybe, maybe it's a lot more than that, but you know, what, what, what can we take away from that in the sense of like finding our alignment? So we know that we're, we're, we're on, we're on the path. That's a great question for everyone. Okay. So I think the first step in that is to allow yourself to be curious. I think sometimes we don't allow ourselves to even ask the question because we're afraid of the answer. It's like, well, what if the answer is no, right? What if the answer is like, no, I don't want to do my business anymore. Oh my God, that's so scary. Typically I find you're not going to want to burn everything down. There's usually a refinement and adjustment and, you know, some change needed, but And even if it was the answer that you really needed to like, you know, have someone leave your team or leave a relationship or move salons, like let's say it really was something big, right? A big career shift. It's, it's going to be a blessing in your life. So I think the first thing is allowing yourself like to check in a few times a year. Like I check in all the time. Like, how is this feeling? How is this feeling? How is this feeling? What are the metrics of how I feel when I do this? Like, even like, for me, hair love, I always leave so exhausted and I love it. It's like great for everybody else, but like I'm so energetically tired. So last year I tried some different things to protect my energy more and it helped. So this year I leaned in even more because part of it being in alignment for me to keep doing it would be that it also feels good for the person doing it, right? It's not just good for everyone else. And that's relatable in everything, right? Think about how many things in our business were like, our clients are loving this, but are you fucking getting what you need out of it? Right. And so it's like, in order for something to be sustainable and scalable, it needs to be in alignment. You can do something out of alignment for a while. And this is actually going to segue perfect into our talk today. Um, but it will hit a breaking point, a glass ceiling of like, I don't know if I can fucking do this anymore like this in this way. And that doesn't mean it has to like throw the baby out the bathwater. Just really look at it. Like what parts feel good? What parts feel draining and an easy tool to be body led. So we're so mental led, right? Even I love that you're calling it inner health because mental health is just a byproduct of 
our emotional energetic health, right? Like if I am depressed, that's not the problem. The problem is other shit that it's now created the symptom of depression. And so it's like, I, in the, our health, our well being is so much more than just the mind. It's our heart, it's our energetics, it's the emotional body, it's the spiritual body. Like we had a wheel, like I have a well being wheel in one of my curriculums, like that would be a piece of the pie. But like we live in a world that's like, neck up. What do I think? What do I know? What do I figure out? Well, how can I fix this? Where like our head's not just sitting on top of this like cute body. Like your body is like this incredible sensing system. We'll talk about the nervous system today, but to be body led would be to notice. So start noticing when you feel expanded, turned on, excited, like something's like Ooh, yeah. Like, I, okay, that could be fun. Like, oh my God, if I got that opportunity, ah, if I got more clients who did that service, like those, those are the things they're like, wow. And notice when your body starts to contract and shut down, you're almost like, oh God, no, like it's a should be like shrinking your energetics almost get like weaker. And so what I'll ask myself, cause there were some parts about everyone's businesses like this. And if if not, they're either unaware or they're, they're lying to themselves. And then until you start to refine it. So I'll look at the parts I'm using hair love as an example, but this apply to your salon business. Look at the parts that shrink you. You're like, Oh God, I hate texting people back. I love when I get to do this service, right? Like watch the parts. I hate when this person comes in, it just fucking sucks my energy. I love when this person comes in and you need to start asking, what is it about that interaction? Do I need boundaries? Do I need that person to leave my fucking life? Do I need to communicate something better? Would, if I raise the price, would it feel different? Because sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't want to do that again. And I'm like, well, if I charge more, how does my body feel? And you might go, I feel neutral. I could do it. Okay. Uh, it, normally, if there's neutrality, it's like, I always ask more questions. Like, could I get a little bit of more information? If I was like, do you want to go to dinner tonight? And you're like, eh. Either way, but if I'm like, would you like sushi at Nobu or would you like to go to a steakhouse at Roy's? You're like going to have more of an opinion. We have more information. Your body's like, ooh, steak sounds really good. Sushi's eh, right? Or vice versa. So it's like, if you're like, oh, okay, if I raised my prices, would it feel better? You're like, I'm neutral. Okay, if you raised it and you made an extra 50 bucks, how does that feel? And you're like, that, that's the ticket. Or you might be like, I could raise it $500 and I never want to fucking hang out with Karen again. That's not, so she's not in alignment for you because the money, everything's energy. Money is just energy. And if that energetic exchange can't feel clean at any point, they're not, it's not, there's dissonance. It's not in resonance anymore. And. And so it's like, okay, if she behaved differently, do I feel like having that conversation? Does that feel like something I'm willing to do? Or do I just really not want to hang out with Karen? And you might be like, yeah, me and Karen need to part ways. Does mm. that answer? Yeah, completely. Deeply. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it probably more than I even asked. <laughs> you know, I start thinking about a few clients. <laughs> <laughs> but Karen's getting fired. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. yeah, but there, there, she's gonna pay. Yeah, there's some <laughs> truth. To, I mean, there, there's a lot of truth to that. I, I know that I was consulting with somebody that was um that works in our suite, and uh, he now is a school teacher, so he's only doing clients on like the weekends and stuff. And the advice that I gave to him, especially about about the money and the the, the money energy advice, was that make make your prices so much that it hurts you to take the day off, right? Because if you don't have, if, if, if there's not enough drive to go to work, trust me on yep. a Sunday, on a Sunday, you're going to be like, ah, I've got, I've got kids tomorrow. I've got lesson plans to do, you know, but make it painful to where if you take that day off, like it's painful as opposed to like, nah, it's just 50 bucks. Right. Yep. You know, yep. so you, you make it, make it worth going in more than it is staying home kind of thing. Um, yep. But uh, but I don't even know where I, why I went there. I don't know because sometimes I like to hear myself talk. Um, so you started a podcast. <laughs> Preach. Um, <laughs> um, so let, let's talk about nervous system regulation and how that uh, how that like how that I don't know if the right word is affect, but how it affects like the your inner health or or how to let's just get into it. Yeah. So uh, can I start with a story? Because I think Please. this will give some context to the content. So first off, I'm going to share today, I'm going to teach literally content that people 
pay to learn inside of a hair show with me or a workshop. So I'm excited to share this. Um, I would only do. Something Elizabeth, do you like want this. me to? Do you want to share the page? Um, I I'll share it when I get to, yeah when we get to the slides totally. Let me. Uh, let me it, do you do video? Yeah, yeah. Let me give you permission. And I would only ever do this for my dear friends. So just know, like, you guys are getting a special hair street treat today. Um, You're the best. But I do want to share, you know, why. So I was behind the chair for almost 10 years. And this year I retired as a salon owner. And then I took, you know, and I shared this story for years. When I taught color, I shared the story of how hairdressers change the world. And if you haven't heard my TED talk, we'll have to link it. It's got a very short, profound message, but I shared this for years. I would say, I believe that hairstylists change the world. And I know that because the hairstylist changed my world. And without going into my whole story, you'll go watch the TED talk. It's totally free. It's on YouTube. The long and the short of it is I was a punk kid and there was a hairdresser who did my hair complimentary for good grades on a report card. And the act of kindness literally changed my life. I was a kid who contemplated taking her own life. I was a kid who hated herself, who did drugs, who ran away, like all sorts of things. And, you know, when I look back, we think, what the fuck was it about a hairstylist that made such an impact on me? Well, we know it wasn't a haircut. It wasn't a highlight. It's not right. Estheticians, nail artists, barbers. It's the same for all of you guys. It's not the manicure. It's not the facial. It's not the fade. It's not the haircut. It's not the color. It's the way that we make people feel. And that's the whole message of the TED is shedding light on our industry on what we do is so much more than the service. Every single artist in our beauty wellness industry knows this. We know it is not just a haircut. We know it is not just a color. We know that we are there for all these sacred pillars in people's lives. And we hold this space that's so special. So I did a TED talk on this. I did a movie on this. And I wanted to bring light to us to remind us of what we do. But I also wanted to bring light to the global, just humans on the street who love a hairdresser, love a barber, have an esthetician, have a nail artist. And they're like, oh my God, you're right. That's my space. Like that is like, and I would have people, we premiered our movie at like just little film festivals or local community things. So these are non hairdressers for the most part, there might be like a barber in the crowd, but like, it's just community people. And people will come up to me crying after, which I did not expect. Like I know how much I love the craft, but like, and hairdressers do and our, you know, our industry, I did not expect like regular humans who are not in our industry to give as many fucks as they did. And I have had I mean, so many people DM me, come up to me crying and they're like, I love my hairdresser. I love my barber. I love my, you know, whatever that practitioner is for them. And they're like, they were there for my daughter's this and my son this and our wedding and my mom died and they, all of these things. And I'm like, I'm, I was so grateful to hear that reflected back. And, you know, with that came the statement they're like my therapist. They're like my therapist. They're like my therapist. They're like my therapist. And as beautiful as that is, there is a downside to that. There is this, it's like the best part of our career can also be the hardest part of our career. The best part of our career is these human connections. It's like the way we make people feel all of that, right? Like everyone knows how to go out and learn how to do really good hair, how to learn how to run their business. Thankfully, we have so many tools for that now. And I would share when I taught hair, why you have to be good at hair so you can do the thing that matters most. Then when I taught business, why you have to be really rich and wealthy is so you can do the thing that matters most. And then there was this hole, there was the well-being hole, this thing that is the best part of our career is also the part that burns us out, that makes us have, give us nothing to give to our families, takes an energetic and emotional and mental toll on us, even for the most profound hairdressers who take care of themselves this is a part that takes constant attention and time and energy to take care of their well-being and for a lot of us in our industry we have like a stereotypical problem of this across the board and I have a lot of like I would say healthy hairstylists in my community because I talk about these topics so I 
I draw in either people who are very burned out and want to get on this bandwagon, or I draw in people who are kind of already getting with the program and they know that this is one of the most important parts of their career to have sustainability and scalability. And so, you know, as beautiful as that is, that this therapy, therapy has a downside. And so I'm going to put a pin in that because I want to come back to it in a moment, but I want to know your thoughts on that. Um, yeah, I mean, we see, we see, we see it a lot. I mean, we, I don't, I mean, personally, and we've talked about this on certainly this month, we've talked about it a couple of times, but like, I've never really, I, I don't know if I'm a sociopath or whatever, but like, I don't, I don't really take other people's energy, um, in the salon. I you love know? that. I, I'm pretty good to be able to go just move client to client and not that I'm not empathetic, not that I don't reach out to them when, when something's going crazy in the life or whatever, it's not that, but I don't own that energy. And, and I don't know, Love that. to be honest, I mean, where I am in my career, where I am in my life now, I don't know if I ever did or if it's just a, or if it's just a recently thing, but I, a recent thing, but I don't ever feel I'm, fi I'm I definitely like my energy gets weird. Or I get burned out. There's the clients that really burn you out I, for sure. That's a real thing. But as far as um, as owning someone's energy or bringing that home, I don't. I'm not really connected to that so much. But I understand that there's a lot of people that are. Um, but I certainly can empathize and, and I understand that client that burns you out, that client that takes up the energy, that client that 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 feels like it's an hour appointment and it feels like you've been with them for half a day because just the energy zap is there. I a thousand percent yeah. understand that, and I also understand the ones that light you up and that fire you up. And, and 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 get you moving um what i have found though and I, I'm, I'm curious this is a question to you tony is that that sometimes the ones that fired you up now 10 years later now they're the ones that burn you out yeah i have yeah yeah i have a couple of those but I, i'm very similar to you unless i get two of those clients in in one day then you're like oh you know and then i and i feel a little bit of the pressure i feel it you know and i'm like i'm not necessarily looking forward. It's like, I guess it's like kind of running a marathon. You know, you got to run. It's going to hurt, <laughs> but you're going to do it anyways. Right. Yeah. So that's kind of like uh, that. That'll be my mentality going into Mar that work. Marathon day. days. I, yeah. like that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Well, and this is what I'll say that I love about what we're going to talk about today. Everyone's experience is different when it comes to working with humans, to working to their, what they have on their plate and their capacity. What I love about nervous system tools is we're gonna set, shed some light on the science behind how all of our social nervous systems are impacted. And there might be some things you go, oh, I didn't even realize that thing I'm feeling is tied to this. And there's some tools that could help me feel lighter, freer, more energized, more sustained. And so, cause a lot of my clients honestly come into my world and they're not at death's door. Like I'm going to share my story in a little bit, what got me into this. And I, that was that I was like unwell, like I was literally unwell and don't, there are a large chunk of stylists, barbers beauty wellness pros that are, but there's also a large chunk that are fucking killing it and they're doing great. And these are tools that are going to help them sustain that and even feel better. So they're going to move from good to great. And that's really where I'm at right now with my maintenance, with my health of my nervous system and my well-being is I want to sustain where I'm at and maintain that um, as life ebbs and flows. And especially, you know, we're all entrepreneurial, even if we work for someone else on in this industry, it's very entrepreneurial essence to it. And we're in charge of our own success. It's like literally clients come to us because of who we are, even if you're an employee. And so there's an aspect of just like the capacity energetically and emotionally um, that dealing with a team and clients and all those things take a toll on us. And it's not um, that it's bad that we take care of, you know, a team and all these clients. It's just having tools that helps us um, sustain and feel really good with it because it does take an impact to carry that much stuff. Um, it's also like awesome that we get to. And so the goal is that we can continue to do that and continue to thrive. So I feel like wherever you fall on the spectrum of like, I'm burned out as fuck. I want to quit my career to, I go into seasons of burnout into, I haven't been burned out in years and I'm really thriving. Um, these tools will support your vitality across the board. It's just going to enhance it. And I don't know anyone who doesn't want enhanced vitality. Mm, let's get enhanced.
Yeah. Okay, let's get enhanced. So I want to share a little bit um, of how I got into this work. Would that help? Just yeah, for real. a moment. Okay. So if you're listening to this, when you get home or get to a computer, make sure you watch it on Spotify. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Um, so I, in 2019, so I'm going to share a little bit of my story. Um, I, I stopped doing hair to be full-time education. I was 50, 50 for a long time. And in 20, I think it was 2017, I went full-time education and I actually got more burned out doing that. And I, and there's, you know, we hold a lot of space for people behind the chairs, but we hold a lot of space when we're like coaching and teaching. It's like it, people are actually paying you to hold space not just they're doing it on top of something which is hard in its own right but like right you're sitting there and you're with someone I also wasn't moving my body as much and so there's a lot of um gifts of being behind the chair even though it can um be hard on our body it actually is great that we move our body so much and if we like keep up with our stretching and movement and stuff it's um wonderful but so I got really sick and I didn't know why and I was like, what the hell? This is so weird. And I just kept pushing. I just kept working. And to me, this speaks to something so much bigger than our industry. This really talks about um, the culture and where the world is at right now. But um, we're just in like a really like go, 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 do, 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 hustle, hustle, hustle. And I think 2020 enlightened all of us. Like we were all like, oh my God, like I want to spend more time with my family. Like I need to take better care of myself. But I was just so in my mental head, go, 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 do, 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 build an empire, had a really successful business, got really sick, kept getting sicker, sicker, sicker. And I kept wanting to get a diagnosis. I was like, someone give me a diagnosis. Someone give me a pill. 2019, I went on a hair love tour with my now husband who has struggled with suicidal ideation and depression his entire life, his entire life. And it wasn't until his twenties that he found out that everyone doesn't want to kill themselves. He didn't know that he was like, Oh, other people don't feel this way. And they were like, no, you have depression. And they gave him medicine and the medicine helped him stay alive. So he was on the medicine. And then in his mid thirties, 2019. I'm really sick. I literally, it hurt to scroll on my phone and I was told I'm pre-diabetic. I have the beginning of arthritis, really bad PCOS. You're probably really stressed. I had chronic migraines. Like you just need to be healthier and we'll give you some pills. And if you don't keep, if you keep going on this path, you're going to have arthritis and diabetes. And I was like, cool, cool, cool. So I, again, was like, okay, I'll do the pills. I'll go to therapy. I'm doing all the things. And we're on this tour. And before we go on tour, Derek's medicine stopped working. And this is what's called being medicine resistant. So when you're medicine resistant, the pill that's keeping you alive, no, your body's resistant to it. And so your options are to try other pills. If you try other pills and they're not a fit, they can kill you. You can have a psychotic break. Like there can be, they cannot blend well with your chemistry. That was the case for Derek and things were real bad. They were really bad. They were really hard. Um, and I was afraid all the time I would come home and I didn't know if he would, if he'd be around anymore. And we found out about a DNA test that you can take that will actually tell you what pill works with your chemistry. So, which was really cool. I wish we would have known that sooner. And they're like, Hey, you can actually get a DNA test and they'll tell you what chemicals work and what don't. So they're like, cool. The only medicine that works with your body is the one you, that you're resistant to. So you can take all these other pills, but they're going to make you crazy pants. And that's what's happened because they just don't work with you. And so you're, you're what's called medicine resistant, and you're going to have to find another alternative to dealing with your depression because this is not going to work. And we had some friends talk to us about, have you heard of breath work? Have you heard of breath work? Have you heard of microdosing? Have you heard of trauma healing? Have you heard of all these things? And we're like, and it was actually, it's a friend of yours that you actually know, but um, <laughs> who's not in our industry, but Kitty Corner and someone you would not expect to say this. And I think I needed to hear it from someone who wasn't like a woo woo hippie. I needed to hear it from someone who was like, just like to me, like normal and made a lot of money and was successful and like all these out of marriage. Like, I don't know why I had this like view of that, which is funny because my dad's like 
a total mountain man and all of that. But I just had never looked into that. And we started doing research on um, psychedelics and the nervous system and the inner child and breath work. And we're like, what, what would breath work do for you? And we started being like, people are having like literally healing their bodies with breathing and they're having psychedelic like experience with their breath only. And they're creating all these new neural pathways. And we're like, what the fuck? And, and like, he, it's so great for so many things, but depression definitely. And so um, we got into it for Derek. It wasn't for me because I thought there's no, I didn't realize that your emotional health, your trauma could impact me on a physical level that hadn't, I had no awareness in my consciousness of that either. So I just thought I'm sick by coincidence has nothing to do with like my childhood or trauma or all the things I've been through. Cause I, I didn't know that the body keeps score. And so we finally, shit got so bad. Like I could, I'm not even going to paint a picture. It was nasty. It was bad. It was really bad. And it was like, we got to check him into a clinic or I don't know what. And I was so sick. And obviously the stress of all that would make, was making me sicker. And we got desperate enough to begin our healing journey. So in 2019, we started doing what I call living room healing, hiring local healers, going in their living room breathing, having somatic releases, working with all different types of modalities and beginning this path towards sovereignty and healing our nervous systems. And I didn't understand what chakras were. I didn't understand the concept of an inner child. I'm like, is there a small human in me? What does that mean? I didn't really know what, I knew what trauma was, but I didn't understand. Like I didn't have any trauma awareness. I had no idea that our body keeps score and holds on to emotions and trauma that manifest as physical issues in our life. Like I, I was looking for solutions in other ways when what I needed to do was go on a healing journey. And I didn't, I didn't know that. And I'm so grateful that like, I literally finally opened up to my followers in 2019 and was like, I'm sick. And like, does anyone have any solutions? And they were actually such a beautiful part of like, have you heard of this? Have you heard of that? Like, I swear it's better than Google having a community because it's real <laughs> humans who go through real shit and they just tell you, and they're like, you should read this book. You should do this. So like my community has been like, so healing for me in so many ways. Like when I have a motherhood issue, I'm like, calling all the moms. What the fuck do you do? And they're like, I got you read this book, do this. So I brought in the people and I was like, I have to stop hiding that I'm sick. And I was afraid as a business coach, people would be like, Oh my gosh, like, how can I trust you to help me make more money and build a team if you're sick? And I, I didn't realize the correlation between the emotional and that wasn't my work. I wasn't doing deep, deep work like that. I was doing like goal setting, intention setting, like manifest your dreams, work your ass off, hustle, never quit. Like that was my message. Like I literally did a podcast that I listened to and I cringed where I was like, if you want to be successful, you're not going to be with your family. You are literally going to sacrifice your family. And I hear that and it, it makes, I have grace for myself, but like, it made me sad. Like I was like, that was literally my programming for years was like, this is required in order to be successful. I didn't even see that there was another way around that. And I was teaching people that and it works. Of course you can benefit off off of wounded ambition. Of course you can. Of course you can benefit off of wounded hustle and sacrifice. Of course you can, but there's a cost associated. And at what point did we think that that cost had to be paid in order to get a beautiful, happy, successful life? And so we go on this journey and we start going through a spiritual awakening and a health journey and hormone healing and nervous system healing and you know, when you, you've experienced something, you, you can't go back. Oh my God, you can't go back. And so in 2020, I started enrolling in school and I'm still literally in school learning so many things, nervous system, trauma, informed, somatics, breath, sound healing. This took me on a whole study and journey that I'll probably be on for the next decade because um, this will be my life's work. And it really took my passion for... Um, you know, the feel good, the well-being as I called it before, but like, I didn't know what well-being really was. Like, I thought it was like being a little heart centered. I didn't know what it was like to live body led, to lead in our heart. 
And I, when I was in my trauma informed, one of my certifications I went through, we started learning all these really cool tools that therapists learn, coaches learn, um, facilitators learn, practitioners learn, and they're tools that they're like, hey, you're in people's energy all day. You're holding space for people. You're energetically you know, in people's space. You're co-regulating with each other's nervous systems. You need tools to protect yourself. And I was like, what the flying fuck were these tools when <laughs> I was in hair school or anywhere? And in 2020, I ended up dissolving my old program workshop in a box and launching my newer mastermind, Sacred Stylist. And I started bringing in all of these tools into my programs because I was like every single beauty and wellness practitioner needs to be taught these tools as a foundation, just like we're taught financial literacy and well-being. These are just tools that will help you in communication, consultations, team building, because you're with people all the time. And so they will help with your vitality, your energetics, your sustainability, um, keeping you out of burnout or healing burnout. And so when I learned that, I was like, oh, my God. God, I can't believe I've never been taught these things. And the lives I have seen changed by some of these simple tools is so cool. So this is what I teach at school. Um, schools, I'll teach it in hair shows. And I'm going to teach it with you today. It's one part of my program, but it's one. Of, it's very simple. It's easy. It's fun. Everybody can do it. If you feel great, great. It's going to make you feel even better. If you feel like shit, I'm so excited for you. Like wherever you fall on the <laughs> spectrum, <laughs> this is going to be so good. So I wanted to give context to why the fuck I would teach you these tools. Let's, yeah, man, I'm in. I'm in. Let's do it. Let, let, let's get some tools. Let's fill our toolbox. I'm ready to feel great. Yeah. Hey, I'm ready so to feel we'll, like shit. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. So I, if I share my screen, is this shared any, like, is this helpful? I think so. Oh yeah, there we go. Like, is somebody, is this video played anywhere? Yeah, we it's we put up a video for Sp on Spotify. So again, like Tony said earlier, if you're listening and you want to actually check this out, um, you know, uh, uh, go to Spotify and pick it up. And it'll also be on YouTube as well, but uh, cool. Spotify is where we live. Cool. So as hairstylists, we're in the business, and this goes for barbers. Anyone in the beauty wellness industry, this is the same. I know I speak a lot to hairstylists, but I have so many people correct me and be like, this is for the massage therapist. This is for, I know, I and I got you, boo. Like beauty wellness pros, you are in the business of caring for other people literally for a living. So who's taking care of you? This is why it's important you put yourself in spaces and you just build into your business plan, your routines, these tools to maintain your own energy, and it will become very habitual. Um, hold on, I'm going to scroll forward to the nervous system part for you, since we are sharing our screen. And so the benefits of this will be this less depleted, less drained, less burned out, less feeling anxious, and just less stress in your nervous system. The upside will be more ease, more inspiration, more nourishment, more fulfilled, more abundant, and more abundant, and more energetically protected. So first, I want to talk about your nervous system. So really simple, when you start to feel pressure, you are shifting into what's called a stress state. When you go into a stress state, your body is so smart. It is so intelligent. You know, this is like fight, flight, freeze, bond, correct? Okay. So when you shift into that state, your autonomic functions in the body, they go into hyperdrive. This is beautiful because it's, it's like, I got to keep you alive. I got to keep you alive. I got to keep you surviving. So when you go into that state, all of these autonomic functions, your heart rate changes, your breath changes, literally hormones start to shift, cortisol levels go up, adrenals, like all adrenaline might shift. You are literally having more blood being sent to your arms and legs because if you're actually in like a fight or flight, your ass needs all your energy to like fight or run. Does that make sense? Mm. The thing is though, all of that is happening inside of your body and this um, pressure, this stress state could be caused by too much coffee, 
It could be caused by no food and too much coffee. It could be caused by you're worrying about something happening later in the day, a coworker, your boss, um, a line of clients, uh, bills, um, you watch the news and it hijacked your energy and your body's like, oh my God, the world is ending, right? And so it's like all of these things could be happening and you don't actually need to run for your life. You don't actually need to fight off a bear to protect yourself. But what's happening inside of the body is exactly that. So it's great that our body switches into this state if we go back to it. And it's great if we only shift into that state when it's really useful and needed. Does that make sense? And so when we stay in a hyper stress state, we start to the body, we have dis, D-I-S, ease, dis ease, and that manifests disease. So that's why so much science shows us, they say stress kills, right? Chronic migraines, autoimmune, all of these diseases are literally root cause started by the nervous system being in a stress state constantly. So when you are in a survival state, I'm going to show you this with the slide, because this is like, at the very least, this is useful to know for the rest of your whole life, you have less access to reason, logic, creativity, personal power, and ease. Elizabeth, can you explain what personal power is? Your personal power is like that sense of self, that feeling where you're like, you're in your power. So when we give our power away, we're like, well, we'll see what that person does. Life's happening to me. And like, if they do this, then I'll do that. When you're in your personal power, like you're the bad bitch of your life. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. You're like in your sovereignty. You're like, no, this is my life, my business. I'm trusting myself. I'm going where I want to go. So when you're in a stress state, you literally cannot have access to all of this because your body's using all of its intelligent functions to do something else. So when your body shifts into, everyone's felt that feeling at rest and digest, that openness, that just, oh, all of a sudden you're clear. The answers you need to make come with so much more ease. You're able to see logically, you're able to be creative and new ideas come in and solutions, you're solution based because you're not like in a fucking survival state. So this would be your, your body literally goes into a state of dis-ease when it's in survival state and it goes into a state of ease. So this is not to get easy and ease mixed up. Ease is a state of being. Ease is like a frequency that you can live in. You can go through something painful in life and not turn it into struggle and not like drag this shit out and run yourself. Who's ever had to make a choice and you just like fucking beat yourself up about it. Like it, it, you made that shit so hard. Like, should I, shouldn't I like, you're just like tortured and the monkey mind comes in. Like that's not ease. Mm -hmm. You could have a hard choice come up and be like, Ooh, okay. Well, let's look at this creatively. Let's look at this logically. Let's look at this with my heart and be like, you know what? This is what's in alignment for me. I'm going to have to have a hard conversation and I don't love that, but this is what's in alignment and you move forward and you do it and it's done. That's like, that's a state of being of trust, of personal power. When you're like in your own sovereignty like that, you literally cannot be that way when you were in a dysregulated nervous system. Like you just actually cannot, you can't outthink a dysregulated nervous system. And what I love about this work is I've probably shared this analogy with you on your podcast before, but I'll share it again is we are instinctual beings. We are so much more animalistic than we give ourselves credit for. We have something like inside your brain, you have what's like three brains. And the first part of it's the neocortex. That's big, biggest part. And we have more neocortex than any other human being or any other animal, any other animal. Monkeys are next there. That's what makes us have more logic, more reason. That's why we're smarter. We know what we know. We know what we don't know. We can learn things. So that's what makes us human and not them. But we're so animalistic. So here is where these instincts kick in. So that fight, flight, freeze, fawn, those are instincts. You are not like, what should I do? If something happens, you're going to move into a mode and you're going to handle it. And it's going to be an instinct. You're not even going to have time to think about it because the instinct's going to override the thinking mind. So here's an example. 
I pop into your podcast studio. I have a bow and arrow. I'm this really badass like warrior chick, right? I got a bow and arrow. And I'm like, listen, I'm going to fuck you up. I'm going to shoot this bow and arrow at your feet and you're never going to walk again, right? And you're like, you're going to have an instinct. You're not going to be like, hmm, what do I feel like doing in this moment? Your ass is going to go fight, flight, freeze, spawn. You're going to run out of the fucking room. You're going to start beating me up. You're going to freeze out of fear or you're going to start fawn. You're going to start people pleasing and being like, well, well, what if I told you that I would let you shoot both arrows into Tony's feet and so you don't have to do mine, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like you're going to have an instinctual response. This happens in our life all the time. Like when people emotionally discount, they're not like, hmm, how can I fuck myself over in this moment? No, their ass is triggered. They're in a moment and they literally go into like negotiation and emotional discounting with themselves. That is a nervous system like thing. That is not. And so it's like, they can look in the mirror and say mantras all they want. Like I'm a rich bitch. I'm a bad bitch. I'm like, you got to be regulated about that. You have to feel, it has to be embodied in the body level. So when we only work on the mental health, the mindset work, we're missing the somatic and the embodiment. And that's where my work, we have something called the sacred success method. We mix soul and strategy and science, but we mix subconscious with somatic because the mind and body and soul play together. And when we're only working with part of the equation, we only get part of the results. And because we are instinctual beings, if you will do, that's why I love breath work. That's why I'm obsessed with breath work. It's the best work for literally clearing and embodying. It's like, it is the hack. Like people are like, how do you do it? You do breath work, literally breath work. Like I could not hold the capacity that I hold without breath work. It's my secret tool for everything. Nervous system healing is like, it's like um, nutrition or working out. It's just part of my day to day. Like, how can I regulate myself every day? So your nervous system, so like, what the fuck is your nervous system? I'm going to give you just some simple information. Your nervous system is your command system. This is the sensing system in your body. It's how you experience life. So your body isn't like, um, hey, my arm hurts. No, you feel pain. You feel sensation. That's how you know. It speaks to you in sensations and emotions. Yes. And so you can think of mind. When I work with people, I always say you are the technology. You are the most divine technology. All life is literally based on your technology. Computers are based off of memory cards, all this off of how we work. Did you know that? It's amazing. So we are the technology mind. Think of your mind like a computer. It you, you can think of things. I could literally like who's ever like been able to figure something out and you're like, Oh, I just need to see it like this. And then you go to see it like that. And you're like, ah, I still feel like a fucking imposter or not enough or <laughs> like, but my mind told me now we have what's called awareness. How beautiful we have awareness that it's an issue. So it's no longer super like buried in the subconscious. And we're just acting like a fool and don't know that we'd be acting like a fool. Now we know that we're acting like a fool, but why is it not embodied yet? Why am I not just instantly different? So if something is a little bit more deeper rooted, you go to the body with it. It's just a little simple shift and you're able to shift your perspective. Beautiful. There was maybe all that needed was some awareness and perspective. For those things that feel a little harder to turn around, this is where tools like breath work are going to help you with that embodiment. So body's like a typewriter. Oh, 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 oh. you got to kind of plug that shit in again and again and again and again. And so when we create new neural pathways in the body and the mind, and the reason I love the science of this shit is because this is the science of change. Like I can genuinely tell you if you attend a retreat with me or attend one of my masterminds, you are promised transformation because it's backed by science. And I understand how your brain and body works. So th there's no, there's just no way that it's not going to happen because we know how it works and we all have the same technology so it can be reprogrammed and rewired. That's the beautiful news. So creating neural pathways, new neural pathways. So think about Derek. He had these patterns that were firing with depression, right? 
And that was like this old pattern and it was really deeply rooted. It had become like a super highway. So once he had awareness that, oh my gosh, I'm experiencing this, right? And he's not just subconsciously doing it. Then he was able to, you know, get curious and come into acceptance. That's That was not an easy process. I'm not going to pretend like that was. That took some time, some really sitting with it and being like, oh my God, like this is how I really feel. But then he wanted to change the way he he was. He wanted to change the way he bees in the world. And so on a being level, this took time. So neural pathways take 60 to 90 days to start creating an actual pathway that would be like drivable. So even a few hours of learning would create a very faint neural pathway, but think of it like a pencil and then you erased it. You could see it, but it's like faint. When you go again and again and again and again, so when there's repetition, that's why with hypnosis, hypnotic language, they say it in a certain way and you listen to it in a way that subconscious mind hears again and again, mantras, meditations, breath work, practices. These are all practices because it's the practice that creates that embodiment. And so when it happens again and again and again, let's say your work is with money mindset right now. If for 90 days you focused on creating new stories and new neural pathways, you would start to see what would be like a highway in the mind. It would be an actual pathway that we could travel if you are repetitive with it. So I have certain tools that I help my clients with. And I'm like, literally, I want them to do it every single day for that long because I want this to start being a drivable pathway for them. And how long did it take us to get this far, right? It took us, we fucking got some pathways and some other ways. Mm -hmm. And so it's not, um, and I hope that helps you see practices and repetition in, in like a, an exciting light, like in a scientific and spiritual light. That's like, oh, I could really commit with my spirit and my intention to this. And scientifically, like this is going to work for me. And that took science for me to get on board, like, and not just think shit was like magical woo woo. Now I see the spirit and the magic in it, but that my logical mind had to like get on board. So the nervous system is one of the most important systems in the human body because it's how you experience life. This is how you experience your fucking life. Like you could literally have the same. I have a wife. Let's say I'm thinking one of you guys, let's say you have a wife, you have a house, you have kids, you have a job. And you could experience life, and I'm not saying this is your life, I know nothing about your personal life, I'm just going to give an example, you experience your life as my kids are annoying, my marriage is fine, my work is pretty good, um, my health is eh. In one year, if you regulated your nervous system and healed it, you could have the exact same life and be like, I have the most pleasurable marriage I've ever had, I have the most satisfying relationship with my children, I have so much vitality in my body. I have so much peace when I look at my business. So it's the way you experience life. That to me is worth everything, everything. The way I experienced, like I told Derek the other day, he had a friend who was his old boss just die and they're 65, which sucks. That's young to die. And I, Derek's 41. And he was like, shit, that's 24 more Christmases. That's it. That would be fucking it. And I'm like, what would be worth like the way you experience life? Everything. Like I only got like 10, eight more summers with Strider until he's in college. Like it just, it's how can I experience summer in a way with more peace and less stress with work and all of that. That to me is yes, the money, the benefits, the opportunities, great. That will all come as a byproduct of you living in alignment and being and attracting from your highest self. And you'll take action, obviously, as that person and show up for it in your job. But like the way I experience my life, like that's, that's literally everything. So your, all of these systems like run through our body and they literally control the nerves, the breathing, the heart rate, the hormones, thoughts, emotions, like all of this is so, so, so connected. We could nerd out for like an extremely, extremely <laughs> long time, but I'm trying to give like a high level view here. So let me, I'll let you give some feedback. Why I find the next slides. Um, well, 
just a couple of takeaways or, or a couple of things that you said that kind of like um, th- that hit me were uh, um, how you're creating drivable pathways. Right. So it, it seems like it seems I mean, we all have drivable pathways. It's just like how 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 healthy are these pathways that that we've created? And, you know, I and I, I kind of want to think about it a little bit differently, like. Like I've got like a six lane highway of my entire life experience. Well, how can I bring that down to one lane and just be on the path in which, which is going to get me the furthest, you know, as opposed to like all the other, I kind of think of the other lanes as like the baggage that's also with that. So how can I minimize the baggage? So minimize the lanes, but then stay, but, but then stay on a drivable, um, on, on a drivable pathway there. Um, I also, I love the connection between, you know, the nervous system doesn't just move the muscles or, 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 your nervous system is your personality. Your nervous system is your thoughts, your nervous system, you know, again, from neck down um, is also a vital part of, of how your system works and not just, you know, something that's like mechanical, like how you move your finger or whatever, but that, that there's, that there's a soul connection with that as well. Yeah. And I, and I learned that uh, my buddy uh, put two arrows in my feet (laughs) and uh, yeah, It was Jennifer. <laughs> right. Yeah. But I also heard, um, I, I read something. It was, it, this is so interesting to me because I just read something uh, about that, about how it takes 60 to 90 days. But when you play, it cuts it in half. When you learn it and play, it cuts it in that, half. Yeah. And that, that was fascinating to me as well. Yeah. Embodiment is beautiful. I literally just did a whole, um, and I do a breath. I just launched a breathwork certification. I don't know if you saw that. I definitely saw it. We were going to talk about that off air, but you know, we'll, we'll talk. We'll yeah, talk. no, off air. but point being, we just did a whole class about embodiment and embodiment rituals. So I'm going to share some of those today because it, it was really beautiful. And we talked about what is disembodiment. So disembodiment would be being disconnected to the emotional body, the spiritual body, the physical body. We're disconnected in those ways. And I said, this was my understanding of it. So I'll share like my quote from my slide was disembodiment is to forget ourselves. Embodiment is to remember ourselves. Mm. Wow. And that's really what healing is, is we're, we are, we're not becoming something that we're not. We're coming back to everything that we've always been. And the world sometimes puts us in these positions where we forget ourselves. We forget our personal power. We forget our own intelligence. We forget all of this. And so healing is a journey to wholeness. It's not about, it's about loving the parts of us that we have judged or hated or made ugly. And it's like bringing all of that back into remembrance and with love And that's why caring for your body, your nervous system is caring for your mental health, your emotional health, your physical health, your energetic health. Like, I don't even care what career path you ever go on. This is one of the like most important things for you to have make into your practices. But especially with us where we're so human centric, we're so with people, we're so loving people, we're like in our art all the time, like the benefits of this. And I really see, you know, I, I know what we do impacts so many lives and so it's like if your life is more whole and more well like you get to be of more service and that's really like that's my selfish part in it i'm like if i make you a better person you're more service and i feel like the ripple effect is just huge it's 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 me being the best me not for everybody else but for me being the best me for me i love it I do too. I feel it. And, 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 and real quick, just as a testimonial, um, breath work sounds woo woo, but you, you leave breath work a different person than you entered breath work. You know, a real quick story that I've told a couple, I don't even know if I've told on the podcast, but, um, when we, when we did breath work with you and Derek the first time, um, you know, there's this, there's you guys open up and you're like, Hey, listen, here's what Derek did this when we did it, but here's what you're going to experience. Some people are going to laugh. Some people are going to cry. Some people are going to do this. And, and I wasn't resistant to it at all, Elizabeth, but I just didn't see how I was going to cry. I didn't see how I was going to get into an emotional state of, of that. I would cry. 
Well, I'll tell you that, and I literally, and I don't even want you to tell me because it'll ruin it for me, but I have no idea how long we did breath work. I don't know if it was an hour, two hours. It could have been, literally could have been five hours because while you're doing breath work, like time doesn't tick. Exist, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're, like you're, 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 you're in this like zone, but um, to, to end the story quickly, like I woke up and my face was covered in tears. I didn't, it wasn't like, I didn't have like a, like an emotional release, but I had a release, you know, and I'm not really sure what it was, but I, I can tell you that you are absolutely a different person leaving breath work than you did entering it. Um, we did it twice that week. We did it last year at hair love. Um, we did it twice that week. And certainly the first one was way more healing than the second one. But I think the reason was because in the second one I was looking for healing and it, it wasn't, my intention was to look for healing. It was, it, but it wasn't to heal if that makes any sense, you know, mm. and I kind of, I think I miss kind of the, the, the boat there. Um, but you know, that's also part of the lesson. And that's also part of what it is, 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 is you will experience exactly what your, you'll experience. I know that, that sounds weird, but um, if you've ever done breath work, you understand what that is. And mm. most importantly, and how I knew that it was true um, as far as the breath work goes, is that my partner here, he, he really dove in, um, to it um, a as well. Um, and like he, he had some experience, he had some profound experience as well. Yeah. A thousand percent. I, you know, I, 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 I found my little inner child when we were looking for that little guy and, and was able to uh, reconnect with that little guy. And it's funny. I was, just, I was laughing the whole time and, but it, it, but, but that little guy was hurt, you know, and I was able to, to, to really kind of connect and, uh, heal a lot of wounds right there it was it was so profound and uh and i'm not you know if you know me i'm not a, like a woo woo kind of guy but i became a believer in that, that at that moment because it was it i mean i found so much peace and from that day forward able to live my life a little different and so much more content and it just it, it, i mean it was like i said it was profound it was beautiful it, it, it really was it was and, and and the thing is is that it sounds woo woo but it's not it's not no. at all not at no. all it's practical it works it's, it, it is it it's is whatever. it allowed me to um through the same work to the same inner child work that we did um it kind of and this is going to sound terrible and if you're listening in i apologize but um but uh it allowed me to kind of like forgive my parents for where they were, because here, here's the thing that, that you can only get with age. And, and, and I, again, I apologize if you're young, but you know, my dad was like 24 when I was born, you know? So, so there's not really like, there's, there's not really like a 22, 23, 24 year old on the planet. And I'm generalizing to make a point. So don't come and DM me, but, but, but that I would really trust a newborn with you know, fully. So like, I, but I just don't think that we're equipped at 24, 23, 24 years old um, to be the best parents that we know how to be because we have so much pain. We have so much growth that, that we're still in. Like you're literally growing up together. And I kind of think that, you know, the joke about being a grandparent is that I think we figured out life a little bit better. So it, it's not that we're not, we're not raising our grandkids with the same lack of life experience that you do as a parent, which I don't know yep. if that makes any sense at all but but that's kind of what i'm I'm coming to dm them <laughs> dm elizabeth no oh no i mean i had a baby at 21 the first time and i look back and I, i'll be a totally different parent when i do it again and i'm a different parent now so i agree it's like i, I was literally a baby raising a baby you're just surviving together so yeah and i mean even at 21 you know 19 20 21 like you've only been out of your parents' house for the most of us. We've only been out of our parents' house for a couple of years. So we're even figuring out what authority is, right? Like, oh, like, absolutely. Like, like, like your relationship with your boss, your relationship with your school teacher, your relationship with everybody is directly a result of the relationship that you have with your parents, right? Because yep. that's how, that's how you, you dissect authority. Yep. Yep. No, 100%. So I want to leave you with some tangible tools and I want to go back to that scientific, we we're talking about when you are in a stress state, you have less access to logic, reason, personal power, creativity. So all of these tools bring you back into the moment of now where you have more power, 
more logic, more reason, more creativity, all of those things, because what all of these tools do is regulate your nervous system. So you switch out of dysregulation into regulation. I'm going to give you different tools. They all work. They're all beautiful. You get to pick what you want to do, depending some sit set and settings are not appropriate for all of these. You'll get the the gist, but all of them bring you back. And so these are wonderful tools to have in your tool belt. So you can use them in the back room on the way to work after work before whatever, for a hard conversation, before a beautiful conversation. Like I want to be in the most present regulated version of myself for all moments of my life, but life hijacks me. Sometimes social media clients, this, that. And so it's like, these are the tools where I can come back into this constantly as a practice. And then you start to live your life more regulated, but this isn't like you do it and you're done. It's like you maintain it just like fitness or health. Like you don't eat one salad and you're great, right? You eat nutritious food all the time to maintain the state of your nervous system. And so there are lots and lots and lots of tools, but I'm going to share some of my favorites that I think apply to our craft the best. Sound good? Let's do it. Beautiful. And I try to give you simple, quick tools. There are definitely like a whole breath where I give short little breath works. Would a big breath work session have more profound healing effects? Absolutely. Can you do an hour long breath work session in between clients? Absolutely not. Okay. So <laughs> the art of holding space, this is a spiritual concept. If you practice yoga or anything like this, you've heard of this. This is a very mindful um, concept but it's the idea that we don't have to fix. We don't have to force. We don't have to get energetically tied up and picturing like a golden bubble of light literally around your chair and that you are holding that energetic space when you are in conversation with people and it's, you don't have to get all tied up and stuff. Watch yourself. Like I'll think I'm holding space and I'll lean back, like physically lean your body back, see how involved you are. And so it's like, even if like I have a whole day of podcasting or coaching or working with clients or whatever, I'll see how drained or not I am. And it's going to be a reflection of how I'm taking care of myself, but also if I'm holding space or not. And so this will help you just kind of sit back and listen and receive active listening, but it doesn't mean anything about you, who you are. It just brings a more like neutral, compassionate energy to your work. So that's the first one. Again, this could be a class in and of itself, but that's the concept of it. The next one is some communication scripts. And I want to share a few of these. So, you know, when you are talking with clients, I'll just give a few really basic ones, but let's say they have, um, let's use a real life example. They're talking about politics. They're talking about the state of the world. They're talking about the economy. They're talking about all of these things that are happening right now. And a, we all know that we don't have to encourage conversations and we can redirect our conversations, but I really want you to like use that to truly like bring a high frequency to like what you're talking about, what you're listening to, all of that all day. But two phrases that I love that are very therapeutic phrases are, that's understandable. Not I understand. No, just that's understandable. That's understandable. You'd feel that way. That's understandable. And that makes sense. Not I think it makes sense. Those are very like energetically protecting statements that allow you to be compassionate and kind and loving, but not involved. And so you'll watch coaches, therapists, facilitators use certain language that like has more of a protective language to it that keeps it about someone else's experience and not getting involved and not digging into it. And so those are really, really easy, easy phrases that you can use. Um, if you have a team, and you're mentoring people, like you have a whole salon team. So good. They're like, I just really wish da, 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 da. that's so understandable. What would be some solutions as a team that we could bring to the table that would allow us to experience more blank, blank, and blank. That brings everyone in, takes the energy off of you. Like those are just really easy uh, facilitation tools. Elizabeth, that you can Elizabeth use. what was the other one? That's understandable. And which one? That makes sense. I get it why you feel that way. Yeah, that makes sense. It makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. 
Um, so some really fun ones. These are like embodiment tools that like literally there's like a whole like art to each of them, but just, I want you to be intuitive with this is dance. There's a static dance. There's so many tools for, um, somatic movement we have science on how much the body keeps score stores emotions our hips store a lot of emotions there's lots of healers that work with different parts of the body but as simple as dance why does it feel so good to dance because it literally discharges emotion and energy from the body this could be as simple as a quick dance party this could be why you get ready dancing this could be shaking so I call it the tree shake because to me, it looks like the leaves and you're like shaking it up and down, mm -hmm. but some people call it hand flapping. Um, like my kid, when he sometimes experiences anxiety, I will use like tools. He won't dance when he feels anxious, but I can get him to shake. Um, I have a whole video that I show in one of my programs, which shows an animal that was chased and attacked, played dead. And then when the animal leaves, it starts to do big, deep belly breaths. And then it starts to shake to discharge the trauma and the energy through the body. So shaking is so intelligent, so instinctual. Um, a lot of people shake during breath work, but like shake more. Like when I'm feeling st just stressed and I could be stressed, everything's fine in my life. And I could just feel stressed. There's just a lot of shit going on. Big, deep breaths and shaking, such medicine, such medicine. Singing. Mm. Singing, why does singing in the car and the shower feel so good? Well, it stimulates the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve runs up by the throat all the way down to the bottom of your pelvic floor down here at the bottom. So the bottom down by your hip bones. And so that runs by all your organs. When you sing, chant, or hum, if you look, we talk about this in our certification. We literally show the science of like all these religions and meditation things, how they sing and they chant and they hum and all these mindfulness, beautiful practices, but it drops you into flow state. It drops you into the moment of now. It literally calms your body down. This is like one of my favorite tools when I do, I speak a lot and I literally work with a singing coach for singing lessons because of the power of working with your vocal cords, the vagus nerve, all of that is so good for you, but you can just sing in your car. You don't, all of these are free. All of these are totally free. They're your own medicine. I and noticed that like if I, had a, if I had a tough client and sometimes I'll start singing. Yes, I love that you do that. No, but it, but it's like it was it. I caught it. and I go, oh, I do this whenever I get like anxious about something. Like I'll start singing, not always, but you know, like like that. And I go, oh, okay. Which is funny so because bad. then I was like, I stopped singing because I thought it was a bad thing. But <laughs> actually, I should probably like just keep singing because if I'm if I'm feeling it, just kind of let it go, right? That's, let it go. It is so weird that I stopped it. Yeah. And we, all of these, right. It's like, they're very like children, like things. It's like, Oh my God, that's like kind of embarrassing. That's kind of weird. And like, yeah. they're really just intelligent, instinctual things. So if you ever see me singing, I know uh, he's <laughs> regulating his nervous system. When you think about a little child who feels safe and they're embodied, they're literally like, la, 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 and they're like dancing and spiraling and they're silly and they make weird noises. And like, literally, is that not the definition of what happens in breath work? <laughs> like, <laughs> but if I see like, you singing every time you see me, then I must be <laughs> stressing you out. <laughs> That's funny. It becomes like a Broadway play. Right. Um, <laughs> So visualization, this is so powerful. And I'm going to give a 30 second science lesson to anyone who's like, I don't fucking know about this. Uh -huh. So if you've ever experienced anxiety, anxiety is future paced fear. We are future pacing a fear. We're like, oh, this is going to happen. This is not going to happen. Oh, right. We're worrying about something that's not actually happening in the present moment. And we know what happens to our body, right? We go into a stress state. So when that happens, that thing, let's say you're stressing about bills or money, you're worrying about the future. What if this doesn't happen and I can't do this? So then in the body, in the present moment, the bill's not actually not being paid. You're worrying about that in the future, about the lack thereof, but the body is going through it right now. It's going through the stress of it right now and all of those autonomic functions, right? Heart, heart. Uh, 
uh, uh, and you start to feel different and have sensations that's happening now, even though you're probably just sitting in your car and there's actually no one hurting you in that moment. And you're actually okay. You're not okay inside. That's what anxiety is. This works the opposite way. Visualization works the opposite way. And I give that example because we visualize and future pace fear all the time. The what if, what if, if you, what if the other way, if you visualize yourself on a beach, feeling the most beautiful breeze you've ever felt, feeling so abundant, all of a sudden what happens is that signal goes from brain to body and it sends a chemical down to the body and you start to feel peace wash over your body. And all of that happens right now. You're not actually at the beach, but your body starts to feel the sensations of peace and presence right now. And so this is some basic law of attraction. We don't attract what we want. We attract what we are. And so when you are more embodied in certain emotions, belief systems, frequencies, energetics, you have less resistance to calling in what you want. The timelines start to collapse for you because there's not stories and all these different things that are cock blocking you from a life that you want to calibrate to and so attune to. So that's why visualization is so important is it attunes you not only to the moment of now, but to the life you want to see and the embodiment you want to experience inside of your body. Hmm. This is why breath work is powerful. Meditation is powerful. Elizabeth, is visualization... Is it similar to gratitude? It, visualization can be with anything. Gratitude is a feeling. Gratitude is one of the highest, one, it's one of the highest emotions, like it carries one of the highest frequencies inside of that emotion. And gratitude is like an expansion, a magnetism in the heart. It's like, oh, that feeling of just like, I, I'm so grateful for what I have. That's a really high frequency. You could visualize and cause that emotion, but to visualize is to see something in your mind's eye and to create a feeling. And then we feel it in our body. I, it just, when you were, when you were explaining visualization, like if, if, if gratitude is part of my practice, I, I kind of get that same warm beachy feeling from it. You know, yeah. so, so I, yeah. I that's why that's why it came up. I love that. No, and you, what you're doing is you're using visualization to tap into that. And so that's where like with embodiment and intention, it's like, what is it that you want to experience, see, be, feel, and using visualization to get you there. It's so, and breath is what I use. Um, so this is like affirmations you can emotionally get behind. And so mantras, affirmations, this is the quick rule with that. This I have a whole class on this in my program, but is, you know, if you are like standing in the mirror saying I'm the most beautiful, powerful being in the world and your body like has dissonance with it, it shuts down. You need to have that expansion feeling. It doesn't, we want to stretch ourselves, right? So we want to have, um, a mantra and affirmation that pushes us in the right direction, but we don't want it to shut us down. So I can't tell someone what's the perfect affirmation or mantra for them. We would come up with some based on where they want to go and we would check in with the body and where, how that feels. And so if you can't get behind it, you won't be able to embody it. And so that's kind of a rule of thumb with that. And then the very last one is breath work. Mm. Bre this is my favorite one. This is the medicine that's with you all the time. Your breath belongs to you. It's the first thing you do when you're born. Spirit enters your body with the first breath. And it's the last thing you do when you die. It's, it's our it's our breath of life. It's our life force energy. And it is medicine at all times. And I'll give you just very simple. There's lots of techniques but one that will regulate your nervous system every time is you just breathe in through the nose and exhale longer than you inhaled out of the mouth. In through the nose and exhale longer than you inhale. You could add a sigh, add intention, tapping touching the heart holding yourself a squeeze all of that breathing in through the nose and exhale 
And there's even up to three breaths starts to shift the state of our being. That's how powerful it is. And it's so simple. That little bit, I feel so much calmer and same, you know, feel little... isn't that cool? Do you do this every day? Yes, absolutely. I don't do an hour of breath work every day. I do the little things I told you I in my rituals in the morning. Some days I feel like one vibe or the other, but yes. But even like if, if, if driving a car stresses you out and you at a red yes. light, do those three breaths and it, it'll totally shift that, that, that tension of driving. Yep. Are there different like practices for breath work? Like, you know, there's so many different things that you hear like box, you know, like box breathing, like, you know, three in, hold three, three out or four, you know, whatever the num numbers are. Is, mm -hmm. that a, is that a different response or is it just the idea to get oxygen in the lungs? Okay. So, I mean, I do a certification on this. We're going through all of this. There's, there's a lot of information to give with that. Yes, there are things that will upregulate and downregulate. Some will help you get into different brain waves that like different states. Um, if you do them long enough, if you're just doing a quick little, like, I need to just chill. I have a few different tools. If you want, I can share them, but like really like what I just shared is very, very simple. I'll share this one with you. Um, and so, yeah, if you're a facilitator and you need to know how to get people into different states and different times, absolutely. Just for yourself, follow like a guided YouTube or one of ours or a Spotify or just breathe in the car. So, uh, the bliss breath, that's the one I just, that's what one of my, my friends calls it. It's just breathing in for like a count of three exhale for six. Um, lip rolls is a really good one. You breathe in through the nose and you literally Another one is breathing in. You can do a few of them. <sighs> and with a sigh. Mm. <sighs> <sighs> and then some really, really simple ones could be taking a few breaths and holding the breath. So when we hold in our breath, we hold in our life force energy. So if you took a few big breaths and exhale. <sighs> Breathing in, good, and exhale, breathing in, and exhale, one more, breathing in, and exhale, slowly, slowly, this next one, breathe it in and hold it. Holding and sipping in a little bit of air and holding the breath while holding your intention for your day. If you need to sip in a little bit more, sip it in. And slowly exhale. <sighs> you can even tap on the heart. Using your intention to breathe into the heart. I am protected. <sighs> Breathing into the heart. I am loved. <sighs> I am safe. And hand on heart, I trust my heart. I trust my desires. And then wrapping yourself up using the breath and visualizing golden light pouring all around you, starting at the crown, breathing in and on the exhale, seeing that light starting to melt around your crown softening around your face and through the neck and breathing in and seeing this light as you exhale go over the shoulders and the heart and the hands covering you up with protection and golden light and on this next breath breathing in 
and seeing that light travel through your core and down your legs, wrapping you up with golden light, zipped up with protection. You are protected, you are loved. Giving yourself one big hug. Good, and one last soft exhale. I'm ready for a great day. <laughs> Preach. That's as simple as it has to be. So Dude. it's like, just keep it simple. That, that's amazing. I was I, 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 I was digging just to be like, if I have a client in my chair, they're stressing me out. How can I? You know, right. I'm not gonna work through it, but but I appreciate I appreciate the breath work. Uh, real quick, Elizabeth, and this is a thousand percent a selfish question. Do you have a Pandora playlist? Oh my God, I have a Spotify. It's Hey Elizabeth Faye, and I have it for everything: sex, anger, sadness, embodiment, money, manifestation. I mean, you name it, I've got it. Like, what is it? These are all different playlists on Hey Elizabeth Faye on Spotify. Yes, you'll see the titles. It'll be like Zen Life, this, that, because oh, your music shifts the whole experience of everything. Oh my gosh, the breathwork music that you have. Like there's some songs that I still listen to, like just to just to listen to, you know, from that from yeah. uh, and that's from two years ago. That's amazing. Elizabeth, uh once again, um I, we're gonna now we're gonna end this podcast with me crying instead of opening it with you crying. But like I, I just I appreciate you so much um as a friend, uh as a mentor, whether you whether you know it or not. Um, I just like I appreciate everything that you're doing, you know, for the industry. Uh, for us personally and 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 you know all the things in there just just love you so much and and thank you for for all that you bring um that you're bringing to the industry and 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 be aware that that whoever that guy is in vegas that changed your life that you have now taken the role of the hairstylist that changes the world and uh we appreciate that i love you we love you back friend Miss Elizabeth Fay, the one and only. Hey, Miss Elizabeth Fay, thank you very, very much for joining us on Yo Day Off. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends, give us a rating, and drop a review. To listen to all the latest podcasts, please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet. And to stay connected on and off the show, you can follow us at Hairdistry on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Peace and love.